Hello guys, Moritz here. And it has come to me that this channel actually hit 1000 subscribers, which is really awesome of you guys. I appreciate it. So let's check real quick how many subscribers I've actually got. And as you can see, we have 1,273 subscribers, which is really awesome. And that's why in today's video we are going to make this subscriber counter with an ESP8266 and some pixel matrices. But before we get into that, I will have some updates for you. The first one is regarding the Ultimate Raspberry Pi project. And there will actually be no video this weekend because I've nooked the wireless chip, which is the thing right here next to the micro SD card slot. and if you look closely you can see that I've nooked it and now that thing overheats and the Raspberry Pi shuts down all the time. So I have to fix that and until I've done that there will be no Raspberry Pi video. And another thing I want to address is that making these videos is really time consuming and that's why I will try to upload one video a month because I'm still studying at the same time and I really don't have much time. So the third thing I want to address is to all of my German subscribers, so look down into the comments because I'm asking you if you would like these videos also in German so you can understand it a little bit better and it's much easier for you than me talking in English. So look down in the comments and I've got a description here. Now while we have this out of the way we can dig right into this and let's build. So for this project you will need some pixel matrices, either these or those. Here I've soldered them together in a row because you can get them as a single module like these and I've just soldered them together or you can get these big ones which are already pre-made and look really nice. You will need at least four of those because when you want to show numbers you will at least need four displays because uh, for example if you got a hundred that fits on there, a thousand fits on there but ten thousand would fit on a three matrix display but a hundred thousand would only fit on a four matrix display and so on and so forth. So that's why you will need at least four of those. You will need some jumper cables like these and an ESP8266 and here I've got the ESP Witty Cloud module which already has an RGB LED and a photo resistor and also a button on the other side and a daughter board with which you can program the whole thing. So this is a pretty easy way to do this whole project and I've got some laying around so that's why I'm using those. So you will need these three things and the way you want to connect it is you will get the jumper cable and on the back side you can see it is labeled VCC ground D in CS and CLK and that means VCC is obviously 5 volts but also 3.3 volts and ground is your negative connection then D in is data in you also need chip select and clock and the way I did it is I took this cable this cable right here and I've switched the red wire around with the brown wire so the red one will be VCC get it in there so red is VCC brown is ground orange is data in and yellow chip select and our green wire is clock like so and on the other hand you will need to get your ESP and you will want to take the daughter board off and have your bare ESP and here you will want to connect VCC to VCC which is down in the left corner ground to ground which is down in the right corner so let's do that now I'll take the red wire plug it into VCC the brown wire to ground and now how I did it I will connect the data in to GPIO 0 which is right here is the fourth one on this side and then chip select goes to GPIO 16 and the last one clock goes to GPIO 14 so I've already have the code on here so let's check if it is correct I will plug in power here and you can see setup then it tries to connect to the Wi-Fi network it has connected and after some time it shows the subscribers 1273 subscribers and now it displays the number so whenever someone subscribes it will show a plus and then how many subscribers subscribed in the minute and then show the number so let's go over the code and see how this works so here at the PC 
what you want to do is go to my github page github.com slash envy and there you want to click on pixel matrix and here's the code i just uploaded for the pixel matrix and the code you want is here in the subscriber account display and let's make that a little bigger so you guys can see better so let's go over the code here i'm including the led control which controls the matrices actually i've got a special version of it because i modified some things in it and you can find it right here in the repository so let's get back to the code um, you will also need the youtube api which you can find on witness menu Arduino YouTube API, which is right here, this one. And you will also need to install the board information for the ESP8266. And you can find it also in the link, which is this one here, the Arduino core. And last but not least, you will also need the Arduino JSON library which is needed by the YouTube API. You can also find that here on GitHub. I also have a link in the project itself. So get those and install them via the managers in your Arduino IDE. And here, the last one I include is the characters header file, which I made. And this, first of all, has a function to convert from characters to an index in this big table. And this is a lookup table for all S ASCII characters which I've made myself and see it's pretty long and tedious and down here we also have some special characters with for some animations logos arrows smileys and stuff you would want to display on your display so if you already have a code for your display or something you could use this or only this to display some other stuff for that I use this LED matrix editor which is also an awesome github project um, I will leave the link in the description, but you can also see it right here. And here you can make your own matrix displays and insert them here. And it also converts this already to byte arrays for Arduino. And you can just copy it here and paste it into your code. It also has some predefined digits and letters, which you can select here. And you can always download the whole thing right here. And that's how I made this file for my project here. And let's continue in the code. Uh, the first thing you will want to define is the display count of your displays. And here you should have at least four and a maximum of eight because otherwise the numbers won't fit on your display, right? But you could use three or less, but then the text also only gets scrolled across the whole display. Then the next thing you want to do is define your network SSID of your network. It's the name of your network and the password of that so the ESP can connect to the network and get the status from the YouTube channel. And for that, you will also need a Google Apps API key and the channel ID of the YouTube channel you want to use. Um, the API key, you can get it with this little instruction here on the YouTube API thing. Um, you will click here on create applications and it will lead you to the Google APIs thing right here. If you not already have an API here. I think it asks you to create one, but if you have already one, you can go here, click on the little plus, create a new project, which is this one here. Then you want to activate some APIs for here. And here we want to search for YouTube. And here you want to use the YouTube data API. I already activated it, so I don't have to do that. So do this and then you will also need some credentials and you can do it here under the point credentials in German Zugangsdaten. Click on here, click on create credentials and then create an API key. Just do that. You will get an API key and then you will need to copy this key and that goes right here. Then in the code, I create a client which will later connect to the Wi-Fi. You will also need to create an object of the YouTube API and I see there's a little typo here, but that doesn't matter. And here we define the time between each request to the YouTube API, which is one minute and save the last state. So that's just a loop thing. We also have a little variable which saves the subscriber count for a little logic, which will come to later. We also have a definition for a direction for the display. So if you have them in a different arrangement than I do, you can change the direction the characters are shown with this little thing. We also have a little function and a lookup table for reversing the bit order of a byte. And that is used in order to do this 
direction change of the characters. Here's a little cheat sheet for the matrix so you know where the corners are if you want to do some own stuff. I also have a little test code here which visualizes a matrix of three so you can see in the console what the matrix is doing without disconnecting and connecting the um, ESP8266 to the matrix itself. Then if you scroll down, we have a function set char. It could also be named differently, but it doesn't matter for now, where you can give it the LED control object, an address of the matrix device you want to display the values on, which is um, a little byte array of eight for each line because the displays are eight by eight, which will be shown on there. And then here's a little boolean which can define if there should be a decimal point shown, which just gets added to the display later on. And you can select the direction manually or use the variable I use above. And here's some code. If you want to get into it and how it works, just look at it. And down here we have a function which can show a text, which is a more statically but it will scroll through the characters or not scroll but it will show a character on each matrix and then move through the characters and you can define text as a string the speed and again the direction and then it just loops through the text and displays it on displays it on the display then we also have a function to scroll the text which animates it by using eight transitions per character so it looks more like a movement from right to left which is a little bit more complex and uses some bit shifting because we need to have the last character and the actual character we want to show and then we shift the one character to the left and the other character to the right and then combine them with a bitwise or so we get an smooth animation from one character to the next one then we also have a function for some animations appear down and scroll down which do some little different things. Appear down will show each line of the value here, but one after another increasingly. And scroll down will move the whole picture you've got in, the, in your value down from the top to the bottom. And here you have the option to smooth the animation, which just uses the same state of the matrix that it has at the moment and just overlays the two, make it a little bit more smooth. You can also select the speed, and direction. We also have another little helper function which gets us the number of digits of a number which is used in the logic down here in show number. This is the most complex function I think in the code here because this one will statically display a number and you give it again the LED control and I forgot to do a reference here but it doesn't really matter because the code just runs on the ESP and there's no time constraint or something and it will just work fine you give it a number and the direction again in which the characters are shown finally we get to the setup of the whole code and here we will start the serial port um, and then print the mac address so if you have a mac filter in your router you can just get it from the console and then enter all the stuff then we have a little setup function which sets up the matrix displays First, it will turn off the shutdown, set the intensity to low intensity, and then clear the displays. Here I've got a little test function which just shows every character and number, so you can test your device. After that, we will scroll the text setup, so the user or you know that this thing is currently in the setup state. It will then set the Wi-Fi to the station mode and disconnect from an access point if it was previously connected. After a small delay, we will try to connect to the Wi-Fi and here we will show an animation, which you also saw. And if we are connected, we will show the text connected. So after that, we have our main loop and here we will try to get the channel statistics every one minute of our channel ID. So you could have multiple ones and display them after each other then we will check if the subscriber count changed if it did we will check if the subscriber count increased and then we will show a little plus sign do a little animation with the youtube character which i've made and then append the number of subscribers and append subscribers if we lose a subscriber we will do the same thing just with the minus in front after that we will save the new subscriber count and show or display the whole number on the display and that's all that's to it so input your ssid password api key and channel id then upload it to the esp 
and you are all done. And that's how you make a little subscriber counter display. But you could also use this to display some other messages, maybe through MQTT or something. So I will probably do another video on this where I will do more stuff with it. But for now, that's all. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe to my channel if you haven't. And I will see you in the next video. Bye.